Hello, you're listening to the Cassandra Mack Podcast, where we maximize success and de-stress from the mess through a biblical lens. Make sure to hang out until the end. I have a special prayer that I'm going to pray just for you. When you have a moment, stop by the website, Cassandra Mack Ministries. Check out our books, inspirational mugs, hoodies, t-shirts, all designed to inspire you to live your blessed life. Happy birthday to all of my May birthday babes happy birthday to you if this is your birthday month how are you celebrating what are you doing for your birthday shout out to those of you who are listening from all across the usa those of you who are listening in canada london uk france uh, namibia nigeria south africa hastings australia germany and uh, all across the world Please let me know where you are listening from uh, so that we know how you're connected to Cassandra Mag Ministries. A big thank you to those of you who support this ministry with your donations, your financial offerings. We could not do what we do without your generosity. And so we thank you for your offerings and for your prayer support. So today's podcast is being sponsored by Aspire and Reach for More. Aspire and Reach for More provides quality, client-centered, compassionate mental health services. They treat the whole person, mind, body, and spirit using a holistic and integrated approach in the delivery of care. Their areas of focus include individual, group, and family counseling, assessing behavioral health and substance abuse issues, while providing evidence-based therapeutic services to improve physical, spiritual, and psychological well-being. They also offer books, worksheets, pamphlets to help people improve their quality of life and aid them in reaching their goals. To find out more, you can visit Aspire and Reach for More at www.aspireandreachformore.com. That's www.aspire and reachformore.com. Thank you to Aspire and Reach for More for sponsoring today's podcast. So this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. And Mother's Day can be a tricky day for some. For many, it is a day where we celebrate our moms. It is a day for some where it's sad because you're remembering your mom if your mom has passed on. And for those who have struggled with a toxic relationship with their mother, it can be a very anxiety producing day. And so today we're going to talk about seven sanity saving tips for dealing with a toxic mother on Mother's Day. And we're going to talk about this from a biblical point of view. Oftentimes people tend to shy away from talking about dealing with a toxic mother especially around Mother's Day, but so many of you have reached out asking for me to talk about this issue because many of you are struggling with this. And so because of that, I want to make sure that I touch on it because there's a lot of information out there around grieving a loss on Mother's Day. There's a lot of information around how to make Mother's Day uh, your best day ever and special, but there's not a lot of information about how do you preserve your peace you know, when you have a toxic mother on Mother's Day. So that is who this uh, podcast episode is for. So let's dive right in. Number one, accept that you cannot change her, but you can change. Here's what you can change. The amount of influence, stress, and drama that a toxic mother-in-law creates in your life. A toxic mother, this can also extend to the mother-in-law, creates in your life. And I think one of the hardest things for people who are dealing with a toxic mother, and this can be a toxic parent, but again, the focus is mother because we're talking about uh, preparing for Mother's Day. And one of the hardest things for a lot of uh, adult children of toxic uh, parents is that a lot of the focus of the conversation is you want the person to change. And, and you'll say things like, you know, it really bothers me when they do A, B, C, D. I can't stand the way that they compare my sister or my brother to me. It bothers me that it seems like my brother can do no wrong. He's the shining light and I am uh, the scapegoat of the family. 
But the thing to keep in mind, and this is really a hard pill to swallow, but it will help you save your sanity, is that we cannot change people. We cannot change people. And you have been dealing with your mother for decades, especially if you are over the age of 30. And so you know her well. And if you have been dealing with your mother for decades, what is the likelihood that because it is Mother Day, Mother's Day that she is going to uh, switch into this person who is loving and caring and there are no more toxic antics. Only you know the answer to that question. But I would imagine that if you've had decades of dealing with your mother-in-law, you know what you're dealing with. The Bible tells us we know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles, right? And the reality is we know people by their fruit, not by their title, not by the fact that we come from the same bloodline, but we know them by their fruit. Fruit is what they produce. And so if you have a parent who produces the fruit of manipulation, the fruit of narcissism time and time and time again, and this is a consistent pattern, we're not talking about something that happens every once in a while, but it is a consistent pattern, then that is the dynamic until it becomes something else consistently. And of course, people can change. That goes without saying, but they have to want to change. You cannot force that change. You can plead, you can beg, you can go to therapy. And hopefully that will allow them to become more introspective and self-aware and to consider the dynamic from your side as you consider some things from like their point of view. But we can't make anybody change. And part of being able to preserve your sanity is to accept that you cannot make her who you want her to be. And I think what happens, especially around Mother's Day and holidays, is that we see these commercials where everything looks like a hallmark moment. And when your family dynamic is far from a hallmark moment, it can be easy to buy into the belief that things are going to magically change on this day. And if you set yourself up for unrealistic expectations, you also set yourself up for big disappointments. And so, of course, anyone can change. You should always be prayerful. But at the same token, you have to accept that you cannot change that individual. That person has to want to change. Even God doesn't override our free will. He gives human beings free will. But what you can change, here's where the power lies. Here's where your power lies. If you embrace it, you can change the amount of influence, stress, and drama that a toxic mother creates in your life. And so rather than allowing your mother to beat down your mood because she will not acknowledge a success that you have had in a particular area of your life. Stop looking for validation from a source that's not going to give it to you and give yourself validation so that when the mother-in-law, when the mother, I'm sorry, says to you something along the lines of, well, your sister's so much more successful than you are. Why can't you be more like your brother? Are you still working at that little job? Rather than you letting that get under your skin to the point where it beats down your self-esteem and it uh, erodes your confidence, you take it for what it is and say, that is my mother being the toxic person who she is. But because I know that I have made strides in this area, I love my job. I love what I do. I value uh, the, the, the commitment and the value that I bring to the type of work that I do. And I do not need my mother to co-sign on my life goals and my calling. Now, this is a conversation you're having in your head. You don't necessarily need to say this to her, but you need to cement this in your thinking for yourself so that you are not seeking approval and chronically seeking approval from a person who's not going to give it to you. And they've shown you this time and time again. It is like going in a dry well looking for water. And then you get mad at the well saying, why won't you produce any water? I don't understand why I can't get any water from you. When you knew before you even went to the well that it was a dry well. And so 
when we have people who are like dry well relationships that we cannot quench our thirst, so to speak, whether it is a thirst for validation, whether it is a thirst for I love you, and we cannot quench that thirst, we have to begin to learn how do I get this from myself by pulling from my source and supply, which is God. Is it optimal? No, but sometimes you don't have optimal and the cards you dealt with are the cards that you have to say, how do I make the best life possible knowing that these are the cards that I was dealt? This is the family that I was born into, but my history doesn't determine my destiny. God still has a purpose and a plan for me. God has a hope and a future for me. There are great things in store for me if I walk in my purpose and my destiny. So number one, accept that you cannot change her. She has to want to do that. She has to desire to want to change, which brings me to two. Grieve the loss of the mother you never had. Oh, this is hard. A lot of times when we think about grief, we think about death and dying. And you might be saying, well, my mother's still alive. Why would I grieve? And so it is not grieving a physical death, but it is grieving the death of the type of relationship that you desire to have. It is grieving the type of communication that you never had. It is grieving a uh, validation that you may never get from that particular individual. And so sometimes we have to grieve the loss of a particular thing that we wish we had that we never were able to receive from that individual. Because what happens when you pretend like you're unaffected and you don't care, it hits you like a ton of bricks when you're sitting by yourself and you're looking at pictures on Instagram or Facebook of other people with their mom, or you're hearing your friends talk about what they're going to do with their mom. It can hit you like a ton of bricks and it can feel very intensely overwhelming because you haven't had an opportunity to truly grieve the loss. And so grieve the loss, whether that means getting a journal and writing out how you feel, whether that means talking it over with a person who you feel safe talking to, and it may not be a family member, it may be a trusted friend, whether that means going into therapy so that you can unpack some of these things that you are struggling with and develop some coping skills so that you can build yourself back up. And so it will look different for each person, but take the time to grieve the loss that you, uh, the loss of the things that you never had. And sometimes we have to take the time to do that for our own sanity, because part of grieving is also a release. It is a letting go and a release. And this is not easy, but it is possible for us to heal our lives. There's a Psalm that is so uh, appropriate for grieving the loss of the mother you wish you had. And it's Psalm 27, 10. And it says, even if my father and mother abandoned me, the Lord will hold me close. And an abandonment is not just physical, but sometimes people abandon us emotionally. They're just emotionally unavailable, whether it is due to narcissism, manipulative tendencies, uh, generational toxic cycles, whatever the reasoning is, sometimes we are born into parents who are incapable or unwilling to give us what we want and need. And when that is the case, allow Psalm 27 verse 10 to minister to your spirit. And if need be, find yourself a qualified therapist, a qualified therapist who is experienced in addressing and dealing with mother wounds so that you have a safe space where you can unpack and begin to put some things in perspective and develop some coping skills to carry you through and build you up. Three, you got to know your mom's limitations. This goes with accepting that you cannot change her. Accept your mom's limitations and keep this in mind so that you're not so easily provoked and triggered. So if you know that you cannot get through a five minute conversation without your mother saying something about your weight, 
or without your mother saying something about your job or why you're not married yet or why you don't have children yet, you can insert the example because it's going to be different for each person. You know the dynamic. So whatever the example is, you've got to know your mother's limitations. Remember, you've had a lifetime of experience with this woman. So you know her in and out. There are virtually no surprises. You know the dynamic. You know the home that you were raised in. You know what the relationship is like. And so because of that, you've seen certain patterns, even if you want it to be something else and you desire it to be something else, you've seen certain patterns. So know your mom's limitation. And a limitation doesn't necessarily just mean that it is something that your mother cannot do. It also means it's something she's unwilling because we can have the capacity to do something and still choose not to do it whether we're selfish, whatever the reasons are behind it. And so that's still a limitation because what it means is you're not going to get the thing you're seeking from, from the source that you are seeking it from. And so you've got to know that because when you know that, what it does for you is it enables you to keep your expectations in line with the individual's consistent demonstrated fruit. Remember, we know people by their fruit. That's what the Bible says, right? And fruit is what we produce by way of our behavior, our habits, our patterns. We know people by their fruit. The Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Now think about what the scripture is saying. So it's using the comparison like, is it possible to gather a grape from a thorn bush? No, it is impossible. A grape will feed you. You can eat grapes. You can make grape jelly. You can drink grape juice. But a thorn will prick you. And so often we're looking to be fed from people who have thorn bush spirits. They constantly prick away at our self-esteem, our feelings of adequacy, our, our confidence, our authenticity by trying to make us believe that we are inadequate and try to get us to live up to somebody else's uh, potential that doesn't even align with who we truly are. That's pricking at our confidence. That's pricking at your authenticness. And so when you are trying to get a grape from a thorn bush, you got to realize that that's not possible because a thorn bush can only produce thorns. And sometimes we go around people who are thorn bushes, knowing that they will only produce thorns. And then we keep asking, why do they keep pricking me? Why does the thorn bush keep pricking me? Because you are looking for, for a grape from a thorn bush. And then the Bible goes on to say, can men gather great uh, figs from thistles? And so you can eat a fig fruit. They have fig newton cookies. But you cannot get a fig from a thistle. A thistle flower cannot produce a fig fruit. If you eat a thistle, it'll scratch your throat. It'll get caught in your throat and possibly make you choke. And so the Bible is clearly letting us know that each thing produces after its own kind. And so when a particular fruit keeps producing when a person keeps producing the fruit of sarcasm, the fruit of unfavorable comparison between you and a sibling, the fruit of favoritism between you and a sibling, the fruit of shaming you, the fruit of guilting you. That's what it is. That's what it is. This is a hard lesson, but it is a sanity saving one. When we come to the realization and you say to yourself, you know, I'm trying to get a grape from a thorn bush. Like, let me really get this visual in my head. Let me visualize what a thorn bush looks like. If you got a Google one, Google one and take a screenshot of it so that you have an image of what a thorn bush looks like. And then keep asking yourself, can I get a grapevine from a thorn bush? It's not possible. So you got to know that. And it's hard. It's hard because we are sold a, a fantasy that, you know, when we grow up, that every family, every household is a family where we tip throw, tiptoe through the toolless and everything is perfect. And that's not real life. There's a lot of dysfunctions in a lot of families, a lot of dysfunctional behavior. So you have to know your mom's limitations. You know your mom. You know you have a good idea. Even though you don't, you, we can't predict the future, you have a good enough idea of what the dynamic is likely to be like when you're around one another because you've had enough experience with her. Four, be respectful while still holding true to your boundaries. 
And so when you were dealing with a toxic parent, you need to have clear boundaries. Having boundaries doesn't make you a disrespectful person. It just means that you know what your limits are and that you are holding true to your limits. But, and you can communicate that respectfully. We don't have to be nasty to set a boundary. And so when you are dealing with a toxic person, whether it's your mother, your father, whoever it is, have clear boundaries while still being respectful. You don't have to yell to communicate a clear boundary. And when they disrespect your boundaries as a grown adult, we're not talking children here. So this is for adults. I want to be very clear. This is for adults, not for children. So when you have a parent who chronically disrespects your boundary, it is your responsibility as an adult, adult, not child, as an adult to uphold the boundary. And so it could mean that you're talking on the phone with your mother and she starts name calling you. And you say, Ma, I don't like it when you call me names. I find that very disrespectful. My name is, and then whatever your name is, Lisa, Sam, John, Seth, Bob. And they still proceed to call you names. Ma, I'm going to end the conversation. And you hang up. You didn't yell. You didn't scream. You didn't go back and forth with name calling. Well, I have a few choice names for you. You do not have to lower your, yourself to a toxic person's behavior to get your point across while still upholding your boundaries. Five, if you choose to visit on Mother's Day, if you choose to visit on Mother's Day, and you know what your plans are, I do not. If you choose to visit on Mother's Day and you know that the dynamic gets tense between the two of you, or maybe there are other family members, your sister, your brother, they're going to be there. And then you get into this whole one upping thing and you know, it's going to be mentally draining, emotionally exhausting. It's going to take a toll on your peace, your joy, your mental health. And if you still choose to visit anyway, that is your choice. I cannot tell you what you should or could do. Then have an exit plan beforehand. What is your exit plan? Have an exit plan beforehand. So be very clear. Have an exit plan. What is the exit plan? Are you going to stay for half an hour? If you are driving in, are you going to get a hotel nearby? Because you know that uh, you do not want to stay in the home and subject yourself to a whole lot of unnecessary stress and drama and you're going to save up your money for a hotel? Are you going to stay with a friend? Or are you going to choose to send a card and, and, and not visit? Are you going to call? So it'll look different for each, each one of you. But whatever you choose to do in terms of Mother's Day, particularly if you are visiting, have an exit plan beforehand. And if you are choosing not to visit, then this will not apply to you. But for those who are choosing to visit, have an exit plan beforehand. Six, honor your mother by not cursing and not being disrespectful. So a lot of people get really, a lot of people get really tense when they hear the scripture, which is in Exodus 20 and 12, Exodus 20 verse 12, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord, the Lord your God is showing you. And so you'll hear people say, and remember, this is a biblical base podcast. So I want to make sure that I'm clear of the audience I'm speaking to. And what happens is because people really don't understand what honor means, some people think honor means being a doormat, making yourself available to dysfunction. It doesn't mean that. And so the scripture says, honor your mother and father, honor your father and mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is showing you. Now, some variations of this text, instead of saying you may live long in the land, say, so that all may be well with you. So this lets us know that honoring your father and mother is tied to your wellness. Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the Lord your God is showing you, right? And so within the context of Exodus at that time, 
It was a physical place, a physical land that God was showing the people of that day. But we also know that God is no respecter of persons, right? And so when you broaden this to apply it to today's times, land also means place, right? When we say things like I'm in a good emotional place, or I'm not in a good emotional space, or I'm not letting anyone in my head space. So that's my mental domain. You're talking about territory, land, place. And so place can also be psychological. And when we want to live long psychologically in the place that God is giving us, which is mental well-being, uh, uh, an abundant life, right? The Bible says that Christ has come so that we may have life and have life more abundantly. And so part of our well-being is attached to honoring our mother and father for the believer. And again, that doesn't mean being a doormat. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean allowing someone to gaslight you. That doesn't mean putting up with disrespect. It doesn't mean that. Part of honoring your mother and father means choosing not to stoop to narcissistic and gaslighting behavior yourself. That's an honorable thing. Another honorable thing is, is to choose to not curse. So let's say that you have a parent and they are working up your nerves and they are being disrespectful and you're like, you know what? I'm ready to, to, to curse. I'm ready to throw something at them. The most honorable thing you can do is walk away. The most honorable thing you can do is hang up the phone. That's an honorable thing to do because you're choosing not to resort to disrespectful behavior. You are choosing to self-regulate even though they are provoking you and they are triggering you. You are choosing to choose your responses rather than reacting from a place of raw emotion. You are choosing to steward your emotions. That's honorable. That's honorable. So honoring doesn't mean allowing somebody to walk all over you. It doesn't mean being a doormat. You were not put on earth to be somebody's doormat, somebody's psychological toilet bowl. But Part of honoring is to choose, I'm not going there with you. I'm not doing this with you today. And you don't have to be loud, nasty, belligerent, use profanity, get into name calling. You can just choose to say, I choose to not participate in this unhealthy dynamic with you. And even if the other parent has, if the parent has a comeback, but well, what do you mean unhealthy? And, and, and you're worse than your sister and you're not as pretty as your sister and your brother's better than you. Rather than saying, well, that's why dad left you. Now you're being dishonorable. No need to do that. You don't have to go where they go. You can choose life and blessings. You can simply choose to say, I see that nothing has changed and I'm not going there with you. And then you hang up the phone or you physically leave. So these are some things that you can do to behave honorably towards your parents, even when they are behaving less than stellar. And then seven, forgive. Now forgive, I want to be real clear, and we'll, this, will, this will be a whole separate podcast. But in a nutshell, forgiveness does not mean memory deletion. It doesn't mean that, that your brain forgets all the things that a toxic mother may have put you through. Forgiveness does not mean that you are saying what they did was okay if they were verbally abusive towards you or something else. It's not saying that you are saying that that's okay. Forgiveness is saying, I am choosing not to let what you did not give me, what you did not do for me and the things you did to cause me pain I'm not going to let that to control. I'm not going to allow that to control my inner narrative, to rob me of my destiny and to control my future. And so I'm releasing myself from this toxic tie because I've got living to do. I've got goals to pursue. I've got dreams to follow. And I need to move forward in my purpose, moving forward towards destiny and purpose. And so it's not about condoning what was done. It is about saying, I choose to refuse to limit my life based on what you did. And that empowers you. So I hope that you found these seven sanity saving tips helpful. If you are dealing with a toxic mother-in-law, 
I want to give you a resource that is very helpful. And I'm going to give you two. One is my book, Speaking Life Into Your I Am. And that is a book of Bible-based affirmations for knowing and really beginning to show up as who we are in God. So often when you come from a toxic household with toxic dynamics, you might have had your identity stolen from you, meaning having a parent say you're just like your daddy is so stupid and say things to really diminish your self-esteem, uh, uh, diminish your self-image and begin to diminish your confidence. And then you want to build those things back up. And so the book Speaking Life Into Your I Am provide you with 25 specific scriptures that speak to the believer's identity in God. And so when we say things like, I am fearfully and wonderfully made, right? When we say that scripture, what does it really mean to show up as an individual who truly believes that about themselves, who walks in rooms like they're fearfully and wonderfully made? Why is it important to affirm that and know that? And so the book takes you through each scripture, talks about why it's important to know it, affirm it, and then embody it. Secondly, is simple prayers to pray, to tame your inner critic and win the battle in your mind. A lot of times when you have had a narcissistic mom and you've had very intense, unhealthy interactions in the home of origin, sometimes what happens is we become critical of ourselves, and you start to hear the, your mother's voice saying the negative things rather than God's voice, which empowers you in terms of who you are in God. And so maybe you hear a voice that says, you're never gonna amount to anything. You won't be successful, you won't reach your goals. And that's not true because the Bible is very clear about who we are. So if the Bible tells us things like your gifts will make room for you, then that means that whatever talents and natural things that you apply yourself to, it's gonna open doors for you. But if you don't know these things, it's gonna be hard to walk in, in the biblical knowledge of who you are in God. And so simple prayers to tame your inner critic and win the battle in your mind are Bible-based prayers. So each prayer is about a minute, uh, about a minute. You can say the prayer in about a minute or less. And each prayer starts with a scripture so that you can pray the exact scripture to build yourself up in each particular mental area. And so all of my books are available at Amazon. Some are available at Barnes and Nobles, but those are the resources that I would encourage you to get. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider giving a financial offering. Every bit helps. Again, we thank those of you who support this ministry with your donation, share this podcast, share it across your social media networks and uh, share the uh, videos that are up on YouTube. And if you want more inspirational tips, tools, teachings, you can join me on Sundays for our Sunday church by phone service. You can find out more about that at CassandraMacMinistries.com. So let's close out with a prayer for those of you who may be struggling with dealing with a toxic mother as we approach Mother's Day. Dear God, I'm praying over everybody who has a strained relationship with their mother this Mother's Day. Father God, I pray that you have your will and your way. I know that you can heal all relationships, Father God. And so we are praying for healing. I'm praying for those who have been affected by toxic words spoken over them, that they may know who they are in you. I pray, Father God, for those who need to learn how to set boundaries so that their yes is yes and their no is no, that they may develop the strength to not people please, but to live authentically in terms of who you have made them to be. Father, I pray that we will begin to know people by their fruit and not by what we desire it to be. Father, I pray for those who are going to visit their mother on this Mother's Day, Father God, that you will help them to remember that even if they feel abandoned by a mother, abandoned by a father, that you will always hold them close according to your word in Psalm 27 and 10. I pray that you strengthen and bless everybody who needs strengthening this day and every day after. We seal this prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So God bless you. Have a blessed week. Remember to be blessed and be a blessing wherever you go. See you next episode.